interested. Not really. I'm just making sure you're not trying to invite your army of demonic tentacle monsters over for a party or something. I'm trying to make we're gonna hide. Fuck a mage, not talking to you. I'll sneak while you ain't just. Can we please have a little bit of trust at this point? I mean, of all the places in this expansive galaxy, this isn't the most comfortable location for me to be in. Besides, I'm not Fulgrim. So you're telling me that succulent food, a luxurious atmosphere, and an actual bed are less comfortable than the realm that is literally a collective seizure? Eh. If you had more mental capacity than a box of Grox manure, maybe you too would appreciate its own unique majesty. This assumes that I'm insane enough to want to. Nevertheless, you just being here is a sign of trust in my lord, is it not? Eh, perhaps. Crazy. Damn Why are you still here? Well, okay, tell me. What are you actually doing? Don't mistake my question for curiosity, I'm mostly just concerned. Research, observation, experimentation, calming my nerves, listening to the whispers of the warp, passing the time of day, and so on. Albeit it's pretty damn hard to get a good focus in this place, with father around, finding any warp traffic to spy on, which is in tinted gold and full of pent-up frustration, is like trying to remove a demonic incursion from your rectum. No, I left my heresy detector in my chambers, but I hear it going on from here. OW! OW! Stop that! Stop what? Stop dazzling me with your ignorance! Your shiny, half-baked head is burning through my retina like an acid made of stupid- Ah! Seriously, though, have you still not got that this heresy expression you speak of is just your Imperium's excuse to put a giant bolt into the head of anyone who goes against you? The Imperium is like a child and a my dad is better than your dad argument that received the right to kill anyone that attempts to argue back, you witless dildodies. Well, if you didn't make everything so... I don't know, diabolical, creepy, and straight up evil, maybe you wouldn't be such easy targets for both propaganda and a bulk shell to the forehead. I mean, you're not doing yourselves any favors by wearing the skin of your enemies, for example. For your information, I have never worn the skin of my enemies. Do I look like a Necron Flayer to you? To be fair, the Necrons and your thousand sons do have pretty similar motives nowadays. Yes, we've already sent the cease and desist order. They're just being ferocious plasteel dicks about it. I do see where you're coming from. All the decapitated heads and giant spikes do make it look like we're compensating for one thing or another. Like a lack of decent parents. But to be fair, given your Imperium's alarming obsession with skulls, I'd say you have some issues of your own. Nevertheless, did you only come here to watch over my shoulder, or did you have some other reason? Well, I actually wanted to ask you something. Well, go ahead. I'd break the monotony. I've been wondering. I've served my Emperor for somewhere around 11,000 years or so. I don't really keep track of and even though he's my, uh, our father, I don't actually know all that much about him besides from what I've seen with my own eyes. Isn't that enough? Of course it is. After fighting this side and hearing his dreams for humanity, no sane man could not appreciate his majesty, wisdom, and might. Indirectly calling me insane now. Truly, he is the one and only worthy leader of mankind. But where did he come from? Did he have parents, or did he just, I don't know, crawl out of a gold deposit? <laughs> Not that's a bad thing, of course. I'm sure it was the most glorious spot in the world, man. <laughs> oh, hungering for some crisp, luscious knowledge, are we? How fascinating. I thought you companions were especially trained to act as completely uninteresting impersonal automatons. Well, truth be told, I think as time has gone by, most of us have either gone a bit into the cuckoo's nest or have managed to retain some uh, form of rationality. Actually, under one exception, everyone has completely lost their mind. Hey, Kitten! Want to go and take a swim in the Promethean pools with us? No. Hi, be that way! As I was saying, I still follow the Emperor right into the Eye of Terror if he commands it. I live for him, I follow his every word, and I never defy him. And I would happily give my life for him. But, well, there's the thing. I'd happily give my life for him. Implying that you can actually be happy. Which also implies the fact that you have thoughts and feelings of your own. 
which subsequently implies you aren't an incredibly stale person whose personal interest can be summed in the words standing around. I guess that's part of the reason why I was elected to the position of Captain General. After millennia of isolation and your occasional murdering of demons trying to creep in, I'm the one and only companion who's not batshit insane. And I suppose that's also part of the reason why you're still wearing your armor after all this time. Yeah! Or, uh, well, not all this time. Oh? I went through a... phase. Can't say I'm particularly proud of it. Those wine clocks really don't leave much to the imagination, you know. Why they rude? I swear I could taste the blossom. Anyway, as you were asking. Ah, yes. The subject. Okay, I know he's been around pretty much as long as humanity has, and that he has gracefully guided us through all of that, but did he make humanity in his image, or is he simply the guardian of our species? And if he made us, what made him? And if he didn't make us, what made us? Ah, the oldest question in human history. What are our origins? Sadly, I'm of little help to you in that field. Been too busy comprehending the Immaterium and superhero comics. Really? Didn't the Emperor tell you himself? And if he didn't, don't you have some old archaic book about it or something? Actually, he never told me much about his own past or humanity's origins. Perhaps he didn't want us to know since he's always been so exasperatingly introvert about things like teaching. That, or it's because I never really asked may have been the latter, all things considered. And no, I don't have an old book lying about that specifically tells us where we all came from. Only my neurotic brother Lorgar would have the talent to write a fictive suicide of that caliber. Besides, even if I had a book like that, all the exciting demon tomes with screaming faces and beware signs lying about would probably just make it look severely unappealing in comparison. Gah, I suspected as much. And I've looked through all the tomes and slates in the palace's libraries. All the data storage and archives, ancient texts and journals. I even looked through albums of travel photos for Terra's sake. But I couldn't find anything about the time before the Emperor conquered Terra during the Age of Strife. If you are that curious, why not just ask Father himself? Yeah, I don't know. Multiple reasons. His mind is so splintered that remembering such ancient knowledge might make him fling his skull across the room like a bowling ball. That and I'm much unsure if he'd actually want to tell me. I mean, if he never told you, why would he tell me? Well, he does seem to like you, despite him being grumpiness incarnate. He relies on you to listen to his boundless complaints and to inform him about, to quote, stupid shit. I'd even say he trusts you. He certainly trusts you more than he trusts me or any of his other sons for that matter. Actually, are you sure you're not his wife or something? No, of course not, but... Wait, really? You think so? Indeed, stepmother. First of all, quiet you. Second of all, I think you might be right. I'm really wrong. So I might just go and ask him then. You do that. Actually, don't you want to come too? Nah, I'm going to practice for that talent show that I heard is coming up next Thursday. You say they're batshit insane, but your fellow companions do seem to know how to have a good time. Uh, unless you want soggy hair and stay down for a week, I would highly recommend you drop that. Why should I... Oh. Ellipsis. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. So let me get this straight. You mean to say that you really have no records of human history before the Age of Strife accessible within the Imperial Palace? No, not really. Most of it is so heavily censored by the Ecclesiarchy and the Inquisition that more closely resembles a barcode than it does anything else. So you have no recollection of the tales of the Old Ones, my own conception, the Rebellion of the Men of Iron, or any other tidbits of humanity actually kicking ass? Incredible. I honestly thought I'd hit the greasy fucking bottom of this shithole when you told me of the Inquisition's activities, but I'm just now realizing that I'm only scratching the surface of this frozen ocean of ineptitude. It's almost as if nobody wants to hear about how our people weren't the be-all and all of civilization in this cesspit of a galaxy. <laughs> um, yeah, funny that, isn't it? Right, this is something that I shall now unfuck post haste. Magnus, fetch some parchment and do what you do best. Take notes. Do not worry, I always have paper with me. What a fucking nerd you are. Anyway, I want you to write down everything I am about to tell you. And when I'm done, rewrite the whole damn thing as a grand historical document. Then I want you to start covering it in holy seals and shit, and then throw it into a pile of dirt for a while, so it gets that shitty old paper look. That'll make stupid people think it's inherently trustworthy. Oh, and shiny britches? 
Yes, my lord? When Magnus finishes his chicken scratchings, I then want you to take this document to the scribes, have it proofer to make sure he doesn't sneak in any mimetic chaos bullshit, then have it mass produced and distributed all across the galaxy to all people of authority. I don't care if you literally need to ram it down their fucking throats, just make sure they read that shit and understand it. No spam box filter shall stop my glorious wisdom this time. Yes, my lord. Now, gather round children, for it is grand story time. Cue visuals. In the beginning, there was nothing. The nothing is nothing that has ever not existed. The nothing just kinda sat about and unexisted, not bothered by any such thing as existence or reality. There may have been some bits of heat energy floating about but that shit doesn't count. Eventually however, this frigid, lonely expanse of plot hole level nothing got sick of being nothing and decided to get a job. So all the energy bits suck themselves into a ball smaller than the level of progress made since I was put on this overglorified Porto Potty lighthouse. Then, the energy exploded with the force of something that you'd compare giant fucking explosions to. There has never been, and never will be, an explosion as big as this one. It was so big that it's literally still happening right now. Wait, what caused the heat to compress and explode like that? I don't fucking know. Dark matter, plane walkers, traversers, a bunch of geeks with nothing better to do making a badass fictional universe for the purpose of inevitably selling inordinately expensive plastic miniatures? It could have been anything. So after the mega explosion, atoms started to take form from the massive amounts of energy that floated around, and these atoms started recombining, collapsing, and forming themselves into elements, molecules, and compounds. These substances, unlike energy, had mass and decided to get closer to each other because now this new thing called gravity applied to them because that's just what fucking happened fuck this boring chemic shit let's get to the good stuff as matter formed into big lumps these lumps became celestial formations stars planets nebulas asteroids comets Eventually, due to conservation of energy, and some weird chemical reactions, life eventually formed on these lumps of space crap. Supposedly, the first life that came about was a race of beings that became known as the Old Ones. The reason for this nickname is that they were the ultimate rulers of reality and evolution, and they were really fucking old, go figure. These beings are the shitty neglectful grandparents of all that is life. They evolved so damn hard that they eventually became spiritual entities, discovering the so-called realm of souls. As a side note, as you can see, they looked something like big, fat amphibians, before they evolved into beings of pure power. So that's a lot of progress for a bunch of giant hyper-intelligent toadmen. Come to think of it, that sounds a lot like the Administratum. Incomprehensibly powerful for almost no reason. Toadman, you rose tin a typewriter with a fucking mouth. Anyway, they then decided to create other species for shits and giggles. Some said that they created all life after themselves, but I'm not so sure on that one. Perhaps they helped push the boat out, but they certainly didn't fucking build it. So these old ones didn't create humanity. That's what I just said, you hollow-headed ninny. Most life evolved in one way or another, and anyone who doesn't accept that is probably really 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 drunk. Lorgar's going to have fun with this. <laughs> Continuing on. Next to arrive were a bunch of floozy fucking milksops that you would recognize as the Eldar. Due to the fact that, early in their evolution, they reproduced like space rabbits, they actually ended up becoming the dominant race in the galaxy. The old ones were more like spread out singularities of imbalanced min-max hanging around here and there. But neither race really cared for each other, so they coexisted peacefully, one spreading like a pointy-eared plague, while the other pooped out orangutans, more frogmen, and races with unpronounceable names. But then, came the Necrontier. Wait. That sounds familiar. Strap yourselves to something, because here comes the most obvious plot twist of the fucking century. The Necrontier were salty assholes, because they had evolved on a shitty, radiation-blasted planet. They built underground cities that seriously looked like depressing tombs, because their life sucked so much that they would rather wait out their own death, than do much else. After years of being subservient to their animosity, like an entire race of entitled middle-aged people, 
they became envious of both the old Own's incredible powers and the Eldar's massive galaxy-spanning girth. Of course they were little more than an irritating bunch of self-pitying tear-jerkers to such powerful races. Eventually, however, the spite of the Necron tear became so mighty that they started hating all life in the galaxy, even themselves, and decided to start murdering literally everything. However, they soon realized that manually making sure every single grass straw on a planet was dead was really fucking tedious, so they started snooping around for something to make into a super weapon. That led to them finding a weird bunch of gas orbiting the super radioactive star that had turned their planet into the empire of atomic bombia. They suddenly noticed that the gas was feeding on the very energy of the star. It turned out that the gas was alive, but not in the same sense as other life forms. It had evolved in a whole different way, and was technically even older than the old ones. Of course, all it actually did was eat radiation and, you know, be what is basically celestial fart gas. But of course, these assy Necrondards just had to fuck with this peaceful, sun-eating anomaly. They proceeded to collect as many of these weird sentient gas clouds as they could find and forge bodies of living metal for them, because what isn't that the first idea that comes to your mind as well? They used the gas's own radiation-eating abilities to lure the dormant consciousnesses of them into the bodies they had made via the use of a bridge of starlight, or some pretentious shit like that. So after eons of peacefully orbiting stars and eating radiation, these beings which knew no other need than to drift around and consume were suddenly given incredibly powerful physical forms and hyper-computerized synthetic brains to give them all the knowledge the Necrotry hearts had collectively acquired. As you can guess, this went swimmingly for everyone involved. Wait! I think I can guess who these guys are now. Congratulations. These... gas entities... They became the Catan. And the Necrons here... Became the Necrons? Give this man a PhD because that's some serious brain power for a giant armored potato chip. But yes, these beings, in their fancy new bodies, with their big new brains, were named the Catan by the Necrotier, and were worshipped as gods. The Catan weren't nice though, they absorbed all the living metal the Necrotier had amassed, and used it to transform this massive species of psychopaths into a race of living, murderous machines who mindlessly serve them. They also ate most of the Necrotier's souls while they were at it, because they were ungrateful assholes like that. That's also when these mounds of fluid dickery discovered that souls were far more appealing than space radiation. I guess souls have more nutrition or something. So the Catan started looking back through the extensive memories of the Necrotier, now renamed Necrons for some reason, and saw that the old ones had the biggest, tastiest souls of them all, and decided that it would be a good idea to eat them. When the Catan came gnawing at the old one's front door, the old ones of course decided to punch the shit out of them with their minds, like all grandparents do. But that's when they noticed that their psychic powers were useless against both them and the Necrons, because they had no souls of their own. This started a massive galaxy-wide massacre of the old ones that went so far that they nearly became extinct. I guess you could say that the old ones got their life towed away from them, Ha 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 Seriously though, that's awful. Well, I guess the Necrons here got what they wanted in the end. Not quite. See, some of the old ones survived, and they decided that the only way to stop this imminent galactic doom is to fuck up in an equally as awful manner as the Necrontier. Thus, they created a new race, one which could fight the soulless Necrons for them. A race with strange reality-bending powers fueled by crowd mentality instead of souls. A race that knew and desired only war and destruction. A race that could weaponize anything and was almost impossible to kill. A race that became known then as the Krorks, or as we know them today, the Orcs, because shortening names is a thing. What? Reskins? There's a plot twist you didn't see coming. The Orcs were actually important all along. So yeah, while the Krorks were fighting the Necrons, the Eldar were shitting their collective frilly patties because they knew that they were next on the menu. So they decided to salvage as much of the old one's tech as they could and fuse it with their own. Believe it or not, the Webway was actually a creation of the old ones, but the Eldar nicked off with the designs like the thieving bastards they are. That said, by combining webway technology and the power of the Realm of Souls, they created a new type of material to combat the living metal of the Necrons called Wraithbone. The Wraith constructs were sent into battle alongside the Krorks to fight back the Necrons. Turns out that while the Cat-10 were immune to psychic powers, it seemed as they couldn't handle being Wraithboned. 
from the moment I heard the name come up, I knew you'd say that. Why aren't you the smartest kid on the fucking block? Of course I am. No wonder you were bullied by your brothers. No, no, that's just uncalled for. Anyway, just when things started to go down the drain for the Cat 10, things got even worse for them, as one particular asshole among them known as the Deceiver, good friends with the Eldar Laughing God, brought together the most edgy Cat 10 he could possibly find, creatures with names that only the most lonely of people could come up with, such as the Nightbringer, the Void Dragon, and the Outsider. The Dessa ever then said to his fellow celestial gas canisters, They. All the other Cat 10 are weak and being killed off. We should eat them before they die so their powers won't be wasted. Bus, the Cat 10 started in fighting and began to eat each other while also being destroyed by the Corks and the Eldar, because that is clearly what an intelligent life form would do. So much destruction was caused in this, the first great war, that the Cat 10 suddenly realized they were expending more energy than they were absorbing and would run out of power if they kept this up. All according to plan, Shago Rath said as he laughed away the night with the Death Lever. Killing all of your allies in the middle of a giant war was apparently a bad idea, who would have fucking thought? Plus, they simply decided to retreat back to the tomb worlds with their Necron armies to wait for the universe to become plump, juicy and unprepared again. It would seem that at some point during that time, the Necrons must have regained some consciousness and taken revenge against the Catan for screwing them over. So I have been led to believe Although, to be honest, it kind of sounds like the deserves what happened to them. That's what you get for being a filthy Xeno, after all. <laughs> so with that giant cluster fuck out of the way, you'd think things would get better. But nope. This giant war had left the universe a complete fucking mess. The old ones were near extinct. The Aldar were still scared shitless and worst of all, the Krorks, with no Necrons left to fight, turned on their creators since the old ones had forgotten to install a fucking off switch. Fortunately, they could be held at bay due to having no technology of their own. That said, something worse than Necrons was on the horizon. You see, all the souls who were eaten, and all those who died in the battles created a major imbalance in the realm of souls. This imbalance within the outer realm corrupted and twisted it with all the ill will, fears, and general lack of common fucking decency that life now collectively experienced. Nightmarish spiritual entities started to emerge from the darkness of the realm like a giant galactic panic attack. It was at this point that the first demons emerged and the realm of souls was given a new name. The Warp! That all makes sense. Yup. Not only did that war fuck up the universe, but it fucked up the outer realms of the universe too. Compared to that war, this 10,000 year old conflict that started when fucking Horos decided to be a bad boy is barely a blip on the radar puts things into context, doesn't it? I... suddenly feel small. And I don't know how to feel about that. You'll get used to it. Besides, you're shorter than most of your brothers anyhow. That's entirely my choice and you know it. But... where were we, humanity, during all of this? We were all busy evolving from primates into tribal cavemen, picking our noses, and fornicating in the ways that primitive beings do. But not for long. You see, warp storms caused by this huge war fucked the galaxy over. And additionally, demonic predators of the warp finished off most, if not Stop all, of the remaining old the ones. Day. It's like some complete ass wipe suddenly invaded an old folks home, demolished all their belongings, and subjected all old people to summary executions. And then another completely unrelated group came along and did the exact same thing all over again. The Eldar. Realizing their own incredible fragility, decided fuck it. Literally. And so they did. Constantly. So much so that they repopulated the galaxy again, became the dominant species once more, and ruined their own reproductive cycle to the point of near non-functionality. I mean, I know you lose it if you don't use it, but if you use it fucking constantly, it's gonna get worn out and shrivel up. It's at this point that the idiot says what species emerged. The what? I am absolutely hilarious, even after all these millennia. Oh, d <sighs> I still don't get it. So, actual humans finally started coming forth out of the evolutionary fuckfest at this point, and a handful of them gained psychic powers similar to that of other species carrying souls around. These early day psychers called themselves shamans, and they were totally super badass, guiding humanity by learning about the ways of nature and the universe's history. 
through the power of the realm of souls and probably some shrooms. However, when the doddering demon douche is accompanied with an entire gang of horribly unnecessary creatures like enslavers and psychnoia and started to show up, the shaman started to be horribly killed off in spasm-tastic manners. So of course, the shamans decided they needed to put their heads together to solve the problem. So they did. Again, literally. By combining their very souls, psychic powers, knowledge, and strength, through ritualistic mass suicide. They achieved in the blink of an eye something that had taken the old ones an entire species worth of evolution to do. They all became a single living being of spiritual energy and power. In short, they created me. <gasps> enemy by the name that I shall give them. We shall know them as... The Space Bags of Death! <laughs> you get off my marble palace before you make anything dirty! A fact for the warning. Outrageous!